sort of pretty busy couple of days. The um, phone's been going pretty, uh, pretty berserk actually, so no, it's a, I suppose it's a dream come true to, to be part of the test court, so hopefully I can get a game in the um, there's been a bit, bit of talk about the sacrifices that you've made, obviously growing up in New South Wales and biting the bullet to move um, down to Tasmania. Um, have all those made it worthwhile? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, it was tough work for a few years there up in Sydney, sort of not really getting that much recognition for doing well in grade cricket and stuff like that. So, you know, the sacrifices that me and my family made, like, yeah, it's definitely uh, it's a good feeling to get rewarded. You know, did a, I suppose a test test squad selection. So. Most kids growing up playing in the backyard, I know you did likewise uh, against your older brother Ian. Um, was playing for Australia a, a dream of yours? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, I came, actually came to a Boxing Day test when I was about 10 years old to watch the West Indies play against Australia. You know, it was amazing, packed house, and you know, pretty much ever since then I've, you know, I've always really wanted to play for Australia and you know, hopefully play at the MCG on Boxing Day. So yeah, you know, it's, it's pretty close now, so hopefully I can get a goal on you know, Boxing Day. Who were your heroes growing up? Were you always a quick bowler? Uh, yeah, yeah. I was more of a batsman when I was growing up, and then I had a bit of a growth spurt when I was about 12 or 13. I couldn't really, wasn't that coordinated after that when I was batting. But um, Glenn McGrath and Kirtley Ambrose, those types of guys, you know, they were definitely ones I looked up to. They, yeah, they just got it done week in, week out. So. Nagging accuracy, obviously, big parts of those particular players' game, and likewise for yourself. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think. My sort of game's pretty, pretty simple, I guess. I just try and challenge the defence every ball, and you know, I suppose ball the batsman out. I suppose it's worked in the last 18 months, and you know, I won't try anything different if I get a chance on the boxing match. There's been quite a bit of talk made about your success here at the MCG. That must have been a feather in your cap because whilst you've done very well for Tasmania, it's tended to suit the bowlers down there at Bell Reef um, over the last couple of years. It must be good for your confidence knowing that you've done well at this ground. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I think it's a pretty good sort of ground to bowl on, especially in shield cricket. The wicket's probably a bit aren't as flat as uh, Test cricket, but I think if you put the ball in the right area for long enough, I think you know, you, and stand the seam up, you can generally get enough out of it all day. So I think if you can just continually do that, yeah, it definitely serves you well. So. There's been a, a couple of significant moves for you. One was was down to Tasmania, but also coming across to play for the Melbourne Stars. Being in different team environments, do you think that'll help you settle into the Australian team a little easier? I suppose it was a bit dawny coming to the Melbourne Stars last year. I hadn't sort of really played that much first class cricket, so there was a couple of big names in the change rooms. But I know, I'm, I know a fair few of the guys in the Australian team just from playing through junior cricket and playing against them in either Sydney or in, uh, in state cricket now. So hopefully the transition into that change room is not, not too hard, and I'm, I'm sure the boys will be pretty accommodating. So. Well, there's a couple of guys that you played in the Australian under 19 team. I think back in 2006, Davey Warner and Matthew Wade. Um, now, just talking about Wade, uh, the fact that he was able to clock 132 as a keeper taking the ball, does that put a bit of pressure on you, Quicks? <laughs> yeah, I was, I was sort of had to look twice at the scorecard when I saw him with the ball. Um, but I've seen him bowl in the nets before, sort of in, in junior cricket. I remember he sort of he got injured up at the centre of excellence one year and under nine. So, uh, it's, it's, I suppose he's got surprising pace, but I don't reckon he'll get to You've just turned 26. We've seen quite a few guys burst onto the scene as very young, um, fast bowlers, sort of um, yeah, guys like Cummins and Pattinson. For someone like you that's in your mid-20s, does that help you appreciate um, the opportunity you've got a little bit more? Uh, yeah, I, I guess so. I, I, I think, you know, everyone's sort of playing for Australia, you know, they're probably... As much as everyone else does, but I guess I suppose I've worked for a couple of years and have, didn't play professional cricket until you know I was quite late. So I definitely, um, I suppose, I suppose it was my last chance when I got the call. So I think, uh, yeah, I definitely relished it more than I suppose younger blokes have. But you know, in saying that, it's I suppose it's everyone's dream to play for Australia. So. You've had a couple of. Um Strong influences um, throughout your career. Um, Ali De Winter was one that worked with you initially when you were uh, first joined Tasmania, and um, Bobby Lind was one of your, your junior coaches um, back in your days in Sydney. Has there been anybody else that's been a strong influence upon you? Um, well, I guess playing for Manly, uh, Sean Bradstreet was—he you know, was around 
when I sort of started coming through as first grade captain and, and when I was growing up as well he sort of ran clinics around the area so I think he was definitely a big influence in my game especially but just I suppose on the other things in cricket like mental toughness and stuff like that. Speaking of mental toughness um, there's a lot made of players making their debut um, in the cauldron that is the Boxing Day Test. How would you settle your nerves and get yourself into the contest? Um, yeah, I suppose it's going to be pretty daunting with Maybe 100,000 people here, but um, I'm a pretty laid back sort of guy. And, you know, I'm just try and keep things as simple as possible, and you know, try not to stray too much from what I've done in the last 18 months of first class cricket. So I think, you know, I'll talk to a couple of guys and see how they, you know, sort of get their, get their head around it. And, yeah, hopefully they'll be right. Lots of things. It's a bit of a case of just sort of getting to the top of your mark and trying to um, block out any external influences and just concentrate on the mark you're trying to hit. Yeah, I think so. Um, I suppose we've been playing cricket for a while now, so I think it's, I'll just have to treat it like like any other game, I guess. And, you know, I'm going to have to get the crowd out of my head, so yeah, it should be a good challenge. So. Just in terms of the change room, have you got your own spot already marked out, or uh, do you have to sort of wait for the elder statesmen to stake their claim before you throw the bags down? Yeah, I think I'll have to wait until all the other guys get into the change room. Um, I haven't really got a spot in there for the Melbourne Stars either, so um, yeah, I'll just have to wait and see. Your father is involved with movie making um, in Romania and, and Bucharest. Um, can we expect a, a documentary on the rise of Jackson Bird? <laughs> no, I hope not anyway. Um, no, he works on big feature films, so I don't think uh, I don't get any, any interest in this story. But uh, no, it's good to have him out in Australia, you know, I don't get to see him very often. So. Um, I suppose it was good timing for him to come down when he did. Um, he was planning on coming down during mid-January for a couple of back-to-back -back games we had with the Stars. So I guess coming down early for Boxing Day, you know, it's not a bad thing. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing him. So. Well, for uh, anybody making their debut in the Boxing Day test, it's a great story. Um, thanks for being with us and all the best. Oh, thank you.